we go. Oh man, we got so many heavyweights in the top eight winner side today. We got Bowser, we got a Ganondorf, and DVD on here now. And then you know Kirby, but here we go. Looks like Pickles are gonna go out to a hot start, get a good 57%. percent to see how uh Adam SK Adam I don't know how to pronounce this name can uh, answer back here. Ooh, okay. Good little Gordo. Right. Yep, trying to go for an inhale there. Not going to be able to get it. Oh, wow. Great double jump there. Getting that little faint. Thinking, uh, we're leaving here thinking that they Rickles are going to land on the shield. but going to get that forward air. And wow, going to be able to take out that stock. Good stuff, good stuff so far. I was going to say, uh, yeah. Good stuff on Rickles to also go to the ledge. Wow, that forward smash. Of course, DV is pretty heavy, so he won't die to that early compared to most characters that's a reversal oh, here, but the shield is safe with mr billy lee on the full health of that one <laughs> that, was almost, that was almost really scary my wrinkles is absolutely smothering him the up smash is not going to be able to kill going to be able to get back to stage no problem man what a scary spot to be in oh that was a hell of a call out too man that that's absolutely insane oh nice one from that from mr billy lee here on that one in the forward air Understanding pretty much Ganondorf has a few options to come back on the stage, take advantage of his poor frame data and his fat and his landing speed, and then you can definitely take all the stock. God, that was really risky here. Just because like that up smash can kill a ridiculous percent, but also like it, it covers the air as well and the ground. It's a pretty <laughs> solid anti-air as well. So good stuff on Rickles to understand the like Brody Lee back on the stage. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean Rickles Rickles is very uh experienced in picking a lot of characters. Obviously, when you're playing Ganondorf, you gotta you gotta practice math. So if you wanna win with Ganondorf, you gotta know what you're doing with this character. For sure. Uh he's not as forgiving as other characters might be. But yeah, no, super good stuff. You're gonna be able to use that. Well, no, not the flame choke. Uh, I think what the up special is. We're going to be able to use that to actually take out the second stock. And Adam is going to be able to respond in kind, taking a stock right back. But here we go into the final stretch. Yeah, good stuff on Rickles. To, I believe that's the forward air. Good stuff on Rickles to go for forward air just because, like, it's such a great move in terms of, like, there's two hitbox. I personally always feel like I'm just doing a great empty hop to the ground oh. there in that situation. That puts Bradley on the side of the stage. Can Rickles get the edge guard here? I'm just going to wait it out a little bit, trying to see uh, what he was going to do. But now he's in a very good spot here. Going to get a two dash attack, one on the shield, one action connecting, putting uh, Mr. Brody Lee in a tough spot. And now at one stick, flying off almost to the bus. Nice, going for that empty hop here. Once again, delaying that forwarder just because you know that second hit can also come from the fast falling it there. He has to go extra low, but unfortunately, Rickles will lose the stock the way. Good stuff on Brody Lee taking game one and knowing, you know, what the lower that I go against Gannon, the less options he will have, and that will be my ability to secure the victory as well. Yep, unfortunate spot to be in there, but you know what? Just getting clipped to that Gordo off the stage really is what secured it. They had to be careful because if Rickles had decided, hey, I'm going to throw out a forward air here for whatever reason, he could have seen a stage spike scenario. So uh, definitely a very risky play from Mr. Brody Lee, but that's fine. Still got the W, still taking game one. Let's see how Rickles can answer back as we get into game two here. Also, good, good stuff to him for knowing that like you can use Gordo when you're trying to come back on the stage. Particularly when you're trying to get back from a ledge, using any move that causes your opponent to hold shield or to want to get away from that situation is always good to give yourself that space to come back on the stage. But here we go. Uh, again, another hot start. It was put on nearly 70% unanswered. But now we're going to get Mr. Bro Lee landing with that air to the up here, putting on a good 27% in the Gordo, too, man. Just pile on damage. That's what happens when you get heavyweights into the game. They just they just pile on damage. They know how to really hit, slap the hell out of each other. Oh, definitely. I think that's the one. That's the craziest thing that I'm liking about uh, Brody Lee here. Is he'll wait for Rickles to go for an option and then he'll punish accordingly like that with the four. He's like, okay, he's gonna come in hot with the four dude because he knows I'm coming off stage, or I'll use Gordo to buy out his time on the ledge. It's just really well awareness of that, and a great opportunity for Rickles to understand, hey, he, this man could not come back up from that one, so I'm gonna go with the up air with that percent on that side of the stage. That's gonna be done deal here, the 35 to 12 percent on two stocks apiece. 
<laughs> oh, see, okay, that's happened like four times now where uh, Brody Lee here has actually inhaled Rickle, and but as soon as he shoots him out, Rickle just coming right back with that flame flamethrower. So uh, he's got to be a little more careful with that because uh, now he's just basically giving free damage to Rickle at that point. Yeah, I was going to say, that's good stuff for Ripple to understand that because most DDDs, they'll actually wait for your reaction and then punish you with a forward air or with another option. That you know, Woo! Yeah, no, they actually, he was able to react to that with the down smash that time, getting the up, not the up down smash, the spot dodge, excuse me, and then hitting him with the up throw after that. And now I'm going to be able to close out that stock with the up air. Uh, game one looked pretty close, but game two is looking very solidly in Brody Lee's favor. Yeah. It's his ability to understand, like, the one thing Ganon can really suffer against is projectiles, so he's kind of really well aware of when to use Gordos. Oh, good stuff on this, the side special there, able to come back on the stage just enough here. He's got to watch himself from the ledge. That forward still has great range behind DDD as well. Yep, getting yeah. another flame spell. Yep. So here's the thing, right? Is, uh... <laughs> even though we got... Now Rickles at 93%, Ganondorf is still capable of winning these games, so... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Rowley cannot let up on the pressure. He has to be very careful. But we're in a tough spot here. Ooh. Wow, gonna be able to get the dodge in a beautiful pack. Wow! Yeah, great stuff from Rickles here. Not pulling the cards just yet. You know what? He knows he's still in the game, but Brody Lee with the sneaky back air. As soon as he saw Rickles try to get out of the ledge, he knows he's gonna roll and he's gonna execute the back air to get game number two. Great stuff. I mean, Rickles, that was really smart from him on the tech situation there. Just because he knows, like, okay, I he's going to he's gonna go off stage with me to get me an opportunity where he might try to get me on a, on a tech situation. I'm going to go in tech and come back on the stage. So that was just good awareness of understanding, like, okay, Birdie Lee is not afraid to go off, off stage against me. Especially with DDD having multiple jumps, also being a heavyweight. And then usually he knows that DDD only has to worry about forward, right? Because that's been the common option we've been seeing from Rickles. For Rickles on his case, though, I like that he's going for that inhale counterplay. He's letting Brody Lee know that, hey, man, you're, these inhale combos you're trying to get, they're not going to be for free. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, good stuff. Can he get that? Is that a, um, a footstool that I saw there? Yeah, I believe so. Sorry. <laughs> I caught up in a little bit of the uh, streamer side on my end. Oh, uh, you're good. You're good. But yeah, okay. Here we go. Top about to be in. Going to be able to get back to the station. No problem. That dash attack just put Rickles in a very scary spot. Going to get that inhale. The other two out far enough. Not going to be able to cancel out of it into that flame choke, which is fine. Yep. Good back air coming off from Burley. And then Rickles with a great counterplay against the Gordo. Now using that forward air to actually take care of it. I'm sorry, neutral air. I've been saying forward air. I am sorry, guys. Using the neutral air and then using the Wizard's Kick to come back on the stage, punishing Burley on the center. Yeah, man, uh, and it's kind of crazy because Rickles has been doing a very, very good job here of kind of staying alive and finding answers here. But like the amount of pressure that uh, Rudy Lee is able to put on, especially with that Gordo, is really creating a, a lot of problems for Rickles. Yeah, and that's what I kind of like that Rickles is kind of like taking this situation. Like, okay, I'm down two games here. I'm not out just yet. I have a little bit of a stock over here, and then my counterplay has so far against Gordo has been going for the neutral arc. Because you can send them back to DD, but it all depends on the timing and if DD is actually going to have time to also call that out against you. Great stuff with the down throw. Another down throw to the neutral arc. Doesn't get the hit here, but you can see that Brooklyn is not afraid to fight back. Mm -hmm. Oh! Uh, kind of a scary spot to be oh. in. He's not going to make it back. That will be the stock. What a good edge guard from Adam here as he is finding his way to a two to one stock lead now. Um, see if you can find a way to close it out 3 0. Yeah, that was good on Rickles. Like, he, he knew he had to throw out an aerial just to stop Adamus from possibly going for a forward air, but unfortunately, like, Adamus was able to be away from it. And then that allowed Rickles to kind of like lose that stock in that situation. But picks up the early. He's never going to gonna under, uh, falter to those situations. Oh, scary stuff because he wanted to call it the spot dodge. Yeah, he definitely wanted to. But, I mean, he's going to uh, up tilt from that. Now, up tilt's very, very strong now. So, I mean, we'll have to see how Rickles can answer back from here. Going to go for the up tilt. Not going to be able to get it the forward throw off stage. The Gordo is not going to be enough. But, I mean, he's in a tough spot now off stage. Is that going to be it? <gasps> what a oh, 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 oh. He, that, he literally lost the aerial fuel for that at the last second. He was about to walk into Rickles' his, his neutral special. So that was very scary. Yeah, but here's the thing, man. Even though the handle is at 106, <laughs> he is still very much a threat. Now he's getting into uh, rage territory, which will allow him to kill Brody even earlier. Yeah. 
Brotherly once again with a really good setup on the Gordos, trying to see when Rickles will move out of ledge for losing ledge invincibility or hit the hit by the Gordos. Wow, that was tough there because you could see that he was not holding the correct DDD. Up to, I don't think Upto would have killed there, and I think Rickles was kind of caught holding the uh, the tilt stick a little bit more towards the right stage here. But Brody Lee will take that to the bank, cash it out, and move on towards a winner's finals.